Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so for several weeks now, we've been hearing about Ukraine starting some major offensive and that they've got allegedly 80,000 troops that are gathered outside of Bakhmut, uh, Artemovsk. Um, but Bakhmut has been pretty much taken. Uh, the train station is still occupied by Ukrainian troops, but the Russian the Russian troops are attacking from three different sides, the north, the south, and the east, and driving Ukrainian forces westward. If they were, if the Ukrainians were going to do something, uh, I, I would think they would have done it by now. Of course, they, they've been talking about, well, we can't do anything because of the weather. Um, okay, under, I understand that, you know, much equipment cannot move, uh, heavy equipment cannot move because of the weather. Uh, but, you know, there have been all that Ukraine has done, there have been a couple of incursions of commando groups that have been defeated um, that have tried to get in there. But these were actually pretty small incursions. Uh, multiple other uh, cities are, uh, are also uh, being encircled or, uh, or overtaken at this time. And the Ukrainians are still, they're back and forth. They keep flip-flopping back and forth. Um, on, on one hand, they say they're going to start this major offensive, uh, especially in the Zaporozhye region. And then uh, they can't do it because of the weather. Uh, they said they were going to start it two weeks ago. It didn't happen because of the weather. And then last week, and it didn't happen because of the weather. And then they were going to start it this week, and now it's supposed to rain all week. Uh, then they say they're going to start this, but then they say they can't uh, do this without more weapons coming from the West. Wait, they, they, that means that it's going to be months. If they're waiting for more weapons, it's going to be months before this happens. The European Union has said that they will provide one million artillery shells this year. Well, that doesn't give an absolute timeline and Ukraine has been asking the European Union for 250,000 shells a month. Um, that's not going to happen. It's widely known that between the European Union and the United States, they can't produce even a quarter of uh, that number of shells in one month. The, the most that the United States produces is 15,000 shells a month, which is enough for maybe five days of what uh, Ukraine is going through because they're going through 3,000 to 6,000 shells per day. Now, uh, some of the Western tanks uh, or armored vehicles have been arriving in Ukraine. The Leopard tanks and uh, Challenger tanks, 14 Challenger tanks from the UK. Um, I, I think 14 Challenger 2 uh, or Leopard 2 tanks. There have been a number of other Leopard tanks that, ha that are being sent there from different countries. But these are Leopard 1s. Leopard 1s are 60 or 70 years old. Um, if they've been refurbished, then they may last for a while. But 
Uh, are there spare parts for these things? Uh, you know, if the, one of these breaks down. And Leopard 1s have very thin armor. They can be pierced. They'll, they'll protect against uh, small arms fire, but even a uh, 50 caliber M2 machine gun will pierce the hull, possibly at close range. Uh, an M60 machine gun, definitely a 20 millimeter cannon will pierce the hull. At close range, if you pierce the hull with uh, one of these weapons, it will go through one side of the tank, and what happens from there is that the round keeps on ricocheting around on the inside. So the chances uh, of survival on the inside are pretty grim. Uh, Ukraine says that they have 900 tanks uh, at this point. Yeah, we don't know how many tanks that Russia has, but uh, we're pretty sure that they've got a lot more than 900. And Russia is reportedly producing 400 tanks a month at one factory. And they've got two factories. So that's as much as 800 tanks a month that they are producing. So in two months, three months, they well surpass production of new tanks on top of what they've already got. Uh, so that massively surpasses what Ukraine has got. And that's not counting Russian production of howitzers, uh, drones, guided missiles, which Russia is producing reportedly at uh, at least 100 a month. Um, there is no way for it that Ukraine can win this. Then there is talk about the UN sending in a peacekeeping force. That's not, and Russia has rejected this. This is not the way a peacekeeping force works. A peacekeeping force has to have the agreement of both sides of a, you know, a conflict to be a peacekeeping force. Otherwise, all that this is, is NATO stepping in and becoming an active combatant in this conflict. That means that NATO de is de facto declaring war on Russia, and Russia will respond. That's not a peacekeeping force. That is bringing us into World War III, period. Um, artillery production from Russia, we don't know, but... Russia is still launching 20,000 to 30,000 artillery shells per day. And this has been unrelenting since, what, September? So there's no sign of that stopping. It is time for peace talks, period. It's time for peace talks. If you're going to send... It's highly questionable whether Ukraine has 80,000 uh, forces outside uh, of Bakhmut. Uh, they're claiming so many, such high numbers, they're, and this is all unconfirmed. Uh, yes, they, it is true that they have amassed certain numbers uh, out in different areas, but... Uh, as far as the numbers are claiming, it's highly questionable. As far as the Zaporozhia region, if they start an offensive, uh, even the New York Times has reported on the fortifications that Russia has been building over months, with deep trenches, 
what are called dragon's teeth and uh, you know just all these fortifications and then the, beyond the fortifications the way that Russians allow, align their forces is in three lines uh, so you you hit the front line which is the strongest you got then you got to get through the fortifications while the first line is firing artillery and cannon and tank cannons and so forth on the troops that are trying to forces that are trying to get through that those fortifications and largely the trenches alone will swallow up uh, any moving vehicles then you got the dragon's teeth which are large concrete uh, blocks which will stop an armored vehicle definitely stop a wheeled vehicle and then air defenses um, Russia has been increasingly using uh, gravity bombs uh, launched from uh, actually a distance uh, they are guided gravity bombs uh, launched from 40 45 kilometers away so short to medium air defenses don't do any good against uh, these uh, you know jets bombers uh, etc and just the fact that they're launching the air attacks in this way means that there is less and less air defense in Ukraine. I'm not in favor of any war. I'm not in favor of anybody bombing. I don't want any of the Ukrainians uh, that are, are that have been conscripted and, and forced to fight. I don't want even the people they want to fight. I, I don't want any of them to die. I, I think that peace talks need to happen. There needs to be a ceasefire, as China has suggested. Just freeze your forces in place and talk. There, what is to be lost by this? It would give Ukraine more of a chance to, for Western weapons to get into the country. Now, while it is true that these delays by Ukraine, uh, you know, serve the same purpose, giving time for more Western weapons to flow into the country, what lies beyond that? Where does this end? I've already done videos in the past talking about how the, in, the entire Ukrainian culture, uh, through uh, attrition through through deaths injuries uh, and debt uh, are seriously destroying the Ukrainian culture forever peace talks at this time would be the absolute best way to try and preserve their culture their heritage, their people. But it doesn't look like any of that's going to happen. Uh, more and more, Europe has said that, that beyond this offensive, that they can't provide anything else. The United States can't provide anything else. Um, the uh, top U.S. official was saying that we cannot send them any attackums missiles um, because that would deplete our, our own arsenal. We can't really send them many more artillery shells. The number of shells that have been sent uh, in, you know, a month are enough to last for one or two days. To continue on with this is suicide. It's time to have peace talks. It's time for the United States to back those peace, peace talks. It's time for the European Union to back those peace talks. 
instead of continuing on this way. Anyway, share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can afford it, please donate whatever you can to help expand this channel and my presidential campaign, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day.